What's going on everyone? Thanks for entering the Lobby of Hobbies, where today we're taking a look at a game hitting Kickstarter November 14th. This one is Monasterium from Emerald Games and DLP Games. Now this one is finally making a North America release on um, crowdfunding. This one originally was a 2020 design. Um, this one is finally getting like a deluxified edition. Um, this is a Euro game through and through. Um, you know, Emerald Games is able to send this one over to us. That way I can give you my thoughts and impressions on this one. This is not a typical preview video. It's not a paid sponsored video. Um, I'm going to give you my honest thoughts on what I thought of this one. And then that way you guys can make a determination on whether or not this is something you want to back on Kickstarter. Again, this is a uh, dry Euro type game. So if this one sounds up your alley and you want my impressions on it, let's get into it. Alright, so as I said, this is going to be a deep overview or preview of this game. I'm going to give you my thoughts, but if you want some deeper dive into this game, I'm going to leave some links down in the description below where you can see some gameplay and talk a little bit more about this game as well. But what are you doing in this Euro? Pretty much you're taking on the role of a Catholic school and now you're sending out your little monks, uh, your novice monks out onto the board to visit various uh, monasteries to gain um, presence in them to do their work and score some points. But this all the way is a drafting game with some um, racing elements along with area control presence and action selection. Yes, it sounds like a lot, but it seems to work here. Um, Pretty much the game is going to start off with players rolling their dice. They have dice that are allocated only for themselves, but also neutral dice they're going to be rolling. And they're going to be placing all the dice of one specific number out to various actions. There's going to be obviously six actions that can be available to them. And after all the players have placed their dice out, they're going to be able to draft those dice and, you know, um, activate various actions. They're going to have a dual layer player board, which is pretty nice. And... Each spot is going to have an action available to it. So obviously we have the number three here. Um, when you do the number three in the beginning of the game, you can only do the basic action. But as you send out your novices that are going to be placed below out onto the board, you're going to open up some other actions. Anytime you do the number three, instead of doing the basic action, you can do one of the open available actions down below of it instead. So actions will get stronger. You can even upgrade your actions where now when you do the number three, you can do, you can also score a point um, when you do that action as well. So you can have these five actions here available to you. Um, anytime you roll the number six, you can do any one of the other actions that you had so it's almost like a wild um so you have this dual layer player board here um and also you have this little sideboard because as you place your workers or your um monks out into the monastery it's going to gain you presence where you're going to be able to activate an action to gain stained glass windows and you're going to be able to place them in this little like sudoku puzzle type over here where you can't have the same color of stained glass in the same row or column so if i place a red here i couldn't have another red below it or to the side of it um, anytime you place something you're going to get one of those bonuses or actions um, and score some points if you fill a row or column now um this one has nice dual layer player boards what i didn't like about these player boards honestly is the way they interlock um you know some people are very t particular about them um, but if you play this game a lot you know you're going to see that as you m move them it's going to start peeling back some of the cardboard here which kind of can be a little bit you know uh, funky you're going to have these little tokens as well that are going to slot into these spots above it um, this one specifically is that re-roll because you're going to have some dice mitigation as well in the game um, where these things don't fully like just sit in here they kind of fit in there really tight so be able to really didn't get a point where i would leave it would push it in i would just leave it lying on top of it which kind of defeats the, the the purpose of the dual layer piece um, same thing with the player board here where you would have these um, spots to indicate the action and as they sit above here Yes, it has a little thumbnail, but with my fat fingers, it's tough to kind of pull it out. Again, you would be peeling off or pulling back some of the cardboard. So while it has the nice dual layer player boards, I kind of wish these little spots were a little bit bigger so everything can lay in there nice and easily. I know why they place it to be snug, but if you're going to be removing things, I think the easiest way is make things a little bit bigger so it's easier to put them in and also remove them. So that's only my, my only downfall with some of these player boards. But I do like games that have that ability where actions get more powerful as the game goes on. And this does have that. Um, 
you're going to be having an action that allows you to move your little messenger along the board and depending on where this messenger is at will determine which monasteries you actually have access to so this is that little racing element and as you move this along the board you're going to get some additional actions when it reaches certain spaces and when it gets to the end of the board you're going to gain another personal die for yourself and then you'll start them back at the beginning of the board and you're kind of moving them along again so with all the different actions it seems like a lot here but with those middleweight euro games or kind of it's not really heavy but i would say this falls in line with that middle to medium heavy weight euro game because there's just so much going on it does leave for that analysis paralysis especially that first time you're playing um placing those dice or even allocating those dice into the various actions that you have available to you it's like you know where am i going to place them best for myself this round that's going to help me but also that i really don't want to give my opponent um you know great access to all these various um spots on the board or actions on the board that i may never even get an opportunity to do that action so there is that analysis paralysis well not only that also when you draft your dice which action are you going to do are you going to do the basic action or is it more beneficial for you to do one of the actions below it um so that's one thing that can be a downfall for some in, 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 in the games like this. But the one crux that I think with all the mechanics, while they have a lot of them in this game, they do work, is the dice placement in the beginning. I really wish, I really love that mechanism in games, but I really wish that that dice placement had a little bit more opportunity for dice mitigation. You do get the one reroll each round, but I wish there was another maybe action or a token that you can collect that would allow you to change the dice face um, to something else and then be able to do something um do i do i think that's you know from a design purpose gonna be i'm not a designer so i don't know if that's gonna be the right way to do it but i, I like games that allow you to mitigate the dice f figures instead of just rolling them and kind of just being set to what the faces are especially in a euro game um that's the only element i think here was a little bit random everything else definitely is more strategic but i do like what they're doing here this one is a game that i did enjoy definitely one you should check out if you like dry euros um if you like games that have a lot of mechanisms unlocking powers to make things a little bit stronger um you're gonna have these little game trays, I guess here, that are gonna pretty much take one of these out, makes a quick setup, everything's in there, your dice, your tokens, all your um, little meeples, your messenger, everything's all gonna be in one of these trays. It has also another tray for the different tokens that you're gonna be collecting throughout the game. But there you have it, that's Monasterium. Also gonna have this expansion. This expansion gives you access to various little market stalls or little tokens you're gonna put out onto the track that you're racing through to also give you an, another added ability to be able to work towards moving that track as well makes it more more powerful i guess in a sense where it's going to give you access to some of the same actions that you were able to do on your player board but now doing that simply by moving your messenger along so i like that as well but yeah definitely check this one out link's going to be down in the description below so if, again if you like euros you like um dry euros which i do enjoy um this one is uh, one you might want to check out it's called monasterium again from emerald games and dlp games finally making its north american release largely here um with this kickstarter launching november 14th but i want to thank you guys for stopping through if you like the content you see hit that subscribe button hit that like button down below chat down in the comments let me know what do you think about this one have you played it? have you heard about this one so without further ado i'll see you on the next one